So I'm in the middle of putting a vintage air system into the uh, 76 Corvette and I've got the entire dashboard, dash pad, steering column all out of the car. And what I have bought is a brand spanking new chrome brake booster. So now is as good a time as any to go after that because I'll have more access to the bolts on that than any other time. So the new bolts are 9 16 new nuts. Um, it looks like I'm going to have to disconnect the pin here that goes to the brake pedal and this piece screws on to the shaft. I'll have to screw it on and then tighten it. Um, there's no instructions as usual. Um, I don't know exactly what that little shaft is for, but I suspect somehow it goes between there and the master cylinder, uh, which I didn't bring down to the garage with me because, or to the shop with me because I have no intention of trying to put that on today. That'll go on after the engine is in and everything. So, the first thing I'm going to do is see what kind of, if I've got the proper socket here. There are the four, oops, shining the light on, I'm watching where the light's going and I'm not paying attention to where the camera is focused but there are four bolts you can see two over there and on the other side in the same places behind all this mess there's two more um, there's the clip on the brake pedal that I've got to take off and uh, see if I can get in to show you the other two bolts. There's one on the bottom, there's one on the top, which Is that one back in there so the first thing I'm gonna do is and I'm probably not gonna be able to video this because of too much stuff in the way but okay 9 16 is the correct socket I'm gonna use my really long extension and try to get in there and take that off um, I think maybe before that, I will try and take that clip. I think that's it right there. That holds the... brake pedal on. Kind of right in the center of the picture there. You've got to pry one end of it up and then slip it off. Uh, I think a long screwdriver is probably going to be what will get that out for me. But I don't think I'm going to even try to video that. I just, I'll show you how it works when I get it off, but trying to hold the camera and tools and everything is probably not going to work out. Okay, I got that clip off in about five minutes and I brought it over to the vise to kind of show you how it works. Basically, there's a bigger hole in the end of it right here that this pin will f slip through and then there's a groove in the pin all the way around 
you can kind of see it there and then it was pushed on farther than it is now because I couldn't push it on I didn't want to push it on and have to go back and remove it again but essentially what I did is I slipped a screwdriver underneath this lip here which when it's on all the way it comes down over the end of the uh, pin and that's what locks it on so I slipped the screwdriver in like that and the vise won't even hold this very steady because of it's gripped on the round part of the head but I got it under like that and then pushed it further it's a little bit easier to do with it in a bracket and not uh, trying to do it left-handed with the thing but once you get it pushed far enough it hits the big part of that hole and it can come out. It's probably going to go flying if I do it, but uh, let me get my screwdriver in there and just pry it. Okay, see it came through the big part of the hole. So essentially that's what I did. Hopefully that uh, makes it clear to you what you got to do to take the original equipment clip off. The pin that came with the replacement one is actually drilled for a cotter pin so I don't know which of these I'm going to use uh, up where it's at it's going to be hard to bend a cotter pin and it's a fairly big one so on to removing the bolts okay I've got the camera set up on a mini tripod um, Hopefully, you'll be able to see something worthwhile here. But there's basically the, uh, the one of the nuts holding that on. And I'm using my power ratchet because I have one. But if you don't, this long extension works really well with a regular ratchet as well. I'm hoping that the unit doesn't fall out as soon as I get all the bolts out. I think I might need a, I need a swivel for that top one. Let's see if we can get the bottom one on the other side. try to get the wrench on it with the extension first and then that ought to work it's not a hundred percent good uh, grip on the bolt but they they weren't tight so Yep, that came off. Uh, the next two, I'm almost certain I'm going to need a swivel, but I'm gonna look at this one on the right first. I might be able to get that. Sure you can't see much here, but I've got to get some more light on it for myself. I can't see it.
Nope, that one slipped off. I'm gonna go get myself a swivel. So I've got myself a swivel here with some black tape on it, electrical tape, that prevents the weight of the socket from causing it to just flop over. So I'm gonna put that between my long extension and my socket. Let's see if I can get it up there on the nut. And even with that tape, it is a little bit wobbly. It's going to be fun getting the new bolts started. That, that electrical tape is not doing the job I'm going to put more on. Okay, I'm going to try again. I'll zoom this out a little bit so that you at least get a sense of where I'm going through. That might not be very tight because I think I'm turning it by my hand. Nut went, but it's off. Oh, it's in the socket. At least I thought it was in the socket. I don't see it there now, and it is definitely not on the stud. Okay, one more. This one I can almost get my hand on. I can. Okay, it's on the on the nut. And it's off. Because I saw it drop out of the uh, socket. So, I can go upstairs. I should be able to pull that right off. Okay, there's the brake booster. Zoom in a little bit on it. Unless I miss my guess, it should pull right out. I don't think there's anything else holding it. Uh, I've already disconnected vacuum lines and the master cylinder is gone. It should be a matter of just wiggling this out of here. Okay. Apparently. 
Hopefully it's got some kind of stuff there to seal it. There's a bit of a gasket there, but um, it also looks like it's been sealed around the edges. And there's a little bit of surface rust right there on the place where it mounts. So. that off and hit it with some rust-oleum before I proceed with anything but even before I do that I think to close the loop on the wiring harness for the air conditioner I'm going to check to see if there's a plug under there that's going to allow me to take that off easily So it turns out that was not rust on there, and um, I don't need to paint it. All I need to do is figure out if there's a gasket or whether I need to put some RTV behind that so there's no leakage. Okay, I'm going to tighten the bracket that goes around the brake pedal onto the shaft in the brake booster. There's a flats on the shaft going into the brake booster that a 3 8 inch wrench fits on and the um, the bracket just tightens on and I'm using a crescent wrench around the bracket to put that on. That's all there is to that. Um, that's plenty tight. I'm going to try to align this bracket vertical between these studs so that when I push it into the firewall I have a chance of it going around the brake pedal shaft uh, first time I insert it. <clears throat> so I've put a bead of RTV around there. I'm going to try to insert this. Hopefully I'll hit the brick pedal shaft correctly the first time. But That's going to stay there. I'm going to take a quick peek under to see how that shaft is lining up with the brake pedal and see if I can even pull it in from there.
Okay, what I think I can do, it's pretty much aligned. And what I'm going to do is see if I can start some of these nuts to hold the booster on. And once I do that, I can draw it in with the nuts. And hopefully that will uh, enable me to line up the bracket for the brake pedal. The one that is on. Okay, I've got one nut on. I've got the <coughs> brake pedal being held down by my electric ratchet because that's a little bit heavy. I'm going to try to push this in. And hopefully, that's sliding over the brake pedal. Okay, it's in a position where I can press the brake pedal and I can get one of those retainers, either the cotter pin or the one I took off originally. Um, I can get them in there. So. Fortunately, my RTV kind of missed. I'm going to have to shove it into the gap before it dries. So I'm going to shut off the video for now from the top at least. and Maybe I'll see if I can set something up on the inside. Okay, right there is where the pin has to go through the brake pedal and through that bracket on the booster. So, getting that part in is not much of a problem. Now, the problem getting that guy on Okay. 
That's the part I don't know if I'm going to be able to do. And the reason I chose this one as opposed to the cotter pin is I felt that the cotter pin, when I tried to bend it, was just going to uh, cause that pin to rotate. So I might try for this for a while. And then if it doesn't work, I might be back to the cotter pin. See if there's another way I can open that up. Problem is, when you get something in here to open it up, uh, it gets in the way of getting it on the, the pin. just had an idea because I picked this up if, if I can get something in the cotter pin to keep it from turning while I bend it that might be an easier pin to use. Let's try that one because that one there is going to be difficult. Okay, let's pull that one out again. You have to pry it out a little bit. Once you pry it out a little bit, you can grab it with a pair of needle nose pliers get it the rest of the way. So, let's try the other one. through. Now I need to get the cotter pin in. Let me rotate that a little bit with some needle and pliers so I can get the hole lined up better. It's through. I gotta figure out how to bend it. That's the hard part. pins work great, but they can be a bear to get in if it's in tight quarters. See, it 
wants to spin. No easy way to get to this. try is to grab that end of the pen with vice grips and see if I can hold it that way. I got a little bit of separation on it on the two legs of the cotter pin but pulling up on the brake pedal to keep it from spinning and I got a screwdriver in between them between those two legs so to start. Let's see if I can get the cotter or the needle nose pliers on it now. Actually, let me let it spin down some and then do it. Nope. It's it's allowing the pin to spin. That's the problem I thought I would have with it. that little screwdriver again. I'm going to try to get it through the loop in the cotter pin on the other side. You can't even get your head in there to see this. Screwdriver in the loop. Now, if I can hold that in with one hand and pull down on the legs of the cotter pin with the needle nose pliers from behind, maybe I can get it bent. Ah, uh, it came out. Okay, you can see right there I got it bent enough that it's not going to come out. It's not the prettiest thing and I had to bend it sideways but uh, it'll keep it in there.
Maybe I'll try to bend that one a little bit more, but for now I think it's it's good enough. And I don't take that lightly since it has to do with brakes. But the pressure on this is not side to side, it's on that pin. Not on the not on the cotter pin. So all I need to be sure is that that cotter pin's not going to come out because that's what holds the pin in. Okay, I am going to try to start the other bolts that hold the booster on. That one started. Now oh, the other side. You have to be a little bit ambidextrous or develop those skills when you work on cars because sometimes your body just won't bend in the way it needs to bend to get your right hand in there. So you need to get your left hand in there. So I've got three of them started. Uh, Fortunately, the studs are pretty long. And they kind of have a unthreaded part that you can put the bolt on whilst you get it while you get it threaded. And I lost that bolt. Got it without dropping it, even though I lost control of it. Okay, four started. Awesome. That didn't take nearly as long as I feared that it would. And I wasn't even pointing over to where I was working because I bumped the camera. Huh. But at least you kind of got the audio and you kind of know how long that took, which wasn't very long. It's be harder to get the wrench in on them. Turn, turn this to tighten. I've been loosening for a while. I don't know if I got that one on very tight. Well, it appears to be snugged up so what I have to do is probably get a 
non-power wrench on it to get a better feel for how tight I've got it. Try the other top one and then I can get rid of the swivel if I can get that on tight. for my knees. New one on this lift ramp with the diamond. That's not even on the bolt. Try the bottom ones without the swivel. Maybe they'll pull it tight up against the firewall and then the others will be very loose and will tighten a lot easier. Those two, I believe, are very tight, but I will put a manual wrench on them. Nice and tight up against the firewall now, and I don't have to mess around with the uh, I don't have to mess around with the RTV. Actually looks like the up 
copper. Nuts are on pretty tight. So I must have had them on better than I thought. Imagine trying to do this with a uh, uh, that one that ran it up some more. But I can't imagine trying to do this with a straight column. Well, I refocused the camera and didn't turn it on. I, I managed to get the top two bolts very tight and I used the power wrench it can be used as a manual wrench so I, I got those in tight and I'm sure that they're not going anywhere so I'm gonna try the same on the more pressure than I can put on it with a 3 8 ratchet. Mm. Oh, just is getting painful. Sitting on a doorstep that's got ridges in it. One last one to make sure it's tight. And again, more pressure on that than I can get with a 3 ace ratchet because I get more leverage with this long handle. So, that's it for the booster install. So I jumped the gun a little bit on that booster install. It would have been a little easier to put my speedometer cable for the new transmission in with that out of the way. I'm gonna try to show you where it came out of. I just yanked it out, the old one. Um, there it is right I get the light on it but the camera's not seeing it so there's the See the hole it came out of right there. This might be a little harder to get in because you're trying to put the big end in first as opposed to pulling it out, which was the little end. It's going to be tougher. Would have been easier if I'd have done this before I put the booster on, but that booster wasn't easy, so I'm just going to deal with this. Pretty sure this is just a matter of wiggling it in till it pops through the grommet. I 
I've actually done this with a speedometer ca or tachometer cable on my 74. So I know that's what happens. Just going to put the camera down for a bit and then shove that in. So when you're holding it, holding the camera in and trying to focus it, aim it. That makes it harder. And once I got rid of the camera in my hand, once I got rid of the camera in my hand, it shoved in pretty easily. So there it is, it's going in. I'm going to go inside and see where that is. Where is it? There it is. Right about where it needs to be. It just attaches to the Back at a speedometer. Okay. There was another thing that I jumped the gun on with the booster as well. And it, it'll require some study of a wiring diagram before I'm ready to do it. This is an old alarm and the switch for the alarm in the fender which is what I want to keep is right back in there I don't know if you can quite see it I'm trying to get the on one vacuum line. Oh. So up and under there, which you can almost see but not quite. Let's see if I can twist it past this vacuum line. That appears to be the which for the, it's a key in the fender of the Corvette that turns on the um, the alarm system. Now there's two wires going into it. There's a pink one and an orange one. So I don't know, and there they are further back there. There's also a couple wires going to um, I think uh, yeah a windshield washer pump um, that's in the back of this bottle here. So I will have to study a wiring diagram see what I've got to do in order to wire that switch into my siren on the alarm 
and so it doesn't seem to be too too hard to get into the uh, the wires and get to them underneath so I should be able to wire something in there as long as I can figure out what needs to be wired in because I want that um, little pin switch here that if the hood's opened it goes off and then there are two switches in the backs of the doors that here of that's the door jam the door closes this way and there's a little pin switch right there in front of the rear wheel that is also in the pocket your access to it is in the pocket for the body mount on the number three and as I call them, number seven on the passenger side so that all is wired into the alarm system so I have to do some studying of the wiring diagram uh, the the siren in there is not a stock alarm. The stock alarm was a it was a relay that caused the horn to go on and off so I'm gonna have to disable that somehow. This was broken when it as soon as you turn the key the horn started blowing so I wasn't able to use that but I don't know what the person who put that system in did I think they just kind of bypassed the and by that system I mean the siren that's in there in the inner fender well uh, I think they just bypassed the alarm that is activated by this little keyhole right here next to the word stingray so I want that to work uh, it'll be with the siren so it'll be different from the the stock but I would like to be able to get out of the car and visibly show people that I'm locking it and go about my whatever I was planning to do come back, unlock it, and go on my way. What this had was a delay. You had to open the door, and then there was a switch in, there's three um, storage compartments. Well, one's got a battery in it over here, and then there's two storage compartments. One was supposed to have a jack, which this car never had when I got it. But the middle one had a switch. And you had about 15, 20 seconds before the alarm started to go off. So the first thing you did is open the door, throw the seat forward, reach back there and um, do the switch. But I don't want to do that. I want to do it through the key and have it so that I can unlock it before I get in or unset the alarm before I get in. So since I didn't bring my instructions for the vintage air, I think that's about all I can do today and it's probably a little bit too late to go starting a new project um, anyway so next time I come down I should have my instructions for the vintage air and be able to proceed with that 
and maybe some other things uh, that need to be addressed while the interior is out.